Those of us still working in the business uh, are standing on the shoulders of others, and so we appreciate what everyone has done. We have uh, really only one more speaker left, and then a, a closing recap. And that other speaker is uh, we, your pioneers here, right? Well, this one uh, deserves that title as much, if not more, than anybody else. Yes. Uh, because uh, she's a double pioneer. Yeah, she is. So Triple it's one thing to be in the Triple formative pioneer. stages of any industry or served in it for a long period of time. But it's another thing to be in a male-dominated industry in the early years and be a woman that cracked into that and succeeded in it despite uh, whatever prejudices existed at the time. And uh, setting a role model, for example, for others. And that's just the beginning of the Dory Lynn story. Dory, will you uh, please come up and just say a few words? host of the Stock Market Show on Channel 29. Bill Fox owned it. And I must tell you, I was terribly nervous about speaking today. I don't know, I have done hundreds and hundreds of presentations in my years, and for some reason, I was uh, terribly, terribly upset and nervous. It was just revisiting the past, listening to all these stories, and it just threw me, and it has seemed to be throwing me. All right, in any case, we had three hour show for two and a half years, stock market show, very interesting. And then we came in one morning to go to work. No cameras, no cameramen, nobody there. It was empty a studio. It was empty. What happened? Bill Fox sold the station to Taft Broadcasting and was going to come in and put a new show in, dialing for dollars. Nobody told us, nobody said a word. That show is kindly thoughtful. Here you go. It ain't for any kids in the room. It's, true. it's not easy. Don't get into business. In any case, <clears throat> what were we going to do? I made an appointment at Channel 17 and everywhere else. No luck. But I was waiting there in the waiting room and the Secretary said, you know, they're looking for somebody who's interested in community events, community something. She was very vague. Well, she didn't seem to know, but that was it. That was it. That's all I needed. I had been, before I came to Taft and Bill Fox, I had been a stay-at-home wife and mother. Then my husband died. And then a few years later, I needed, she was growing up, and I needed an, another life in any case, and that's how it happened. Somebody suggested a new station was opening up. But in any case, times were changing. This was 1970, and the Federal Communications Commission was changing a lot of things. They were making it really, really tough 
for us to ignore the problems and concerns of people in the tri-state. We had to do special programming. We had to go out into the community and find out what they wanted, speak to them and submit these things to the file. The public files had to be looked at and everybody had very fancy lawyers. Let me tell you, this was serious stuff. You could get into true trouble, even lose your license if you didn't pay attention to these things. And one more very important thing, women must not be discriminated against. <laughs> they must be hired, they must be listened to. This was a very, very early Me Too. All right? I made the appointment at 17, spoke to the secretary. He was sick, he had the measles. But when he came back, I had an interview. And I had, incidentally, I must tell you, I had been very active as a uh, non-broadcaster in the community. I had been on the board of several agencies, Salvation Army, there were several. How could you not hire me? How could you possibly not hire a person who had on-air experience and who had been active in the community? Of course, there it was. Well, I started work, I didn't know a thing. What do you do, what do you do? How do you plan a programming? I had not done that. I had been, I had, we had discussed things on air, Alan and I, but th this was all new to me. They didn't know what to do, this was new to them. And all of a sudden, the second day, and this is the truth, the God and honest truth, the second day, who walks in? This handsome young man, Joe Chiappa. I'll never forget him. He was on the staff of the Greater Philadelphia something for the prevention of venereal disease. <laughs> true, true story. That was it. That was it. That's what we're going to do. We're going to pay attention to venereal disease. Which, it was syphilis, actually. Now, don't forget, in those days, nobody had syphilis, apparently. Nobody talked about it. Nobody ever knew anybody who had syphilis. Well, <clears throat> he also led me to Wyeth Pharmaceuticals. And Wyeth Pharmaceuticals were the makers of penicillin. And penicillin still is the treatment for syphilis, among other things. But, amen, somebody said that. I see who it is, I see who it is. In any case, and then we found two kids, incidentally, two kids on staff. They were innocent and young, and we made them, we got a picture of them. And then we had a lovely ad in the Sunday paper. And Harry Harris wrote us up. And there we were, all those kids' parents didn't like it at all, but that didn't matter to us. Why? Because we were being paid by Wyatt. We were making money, that's what counted. <laughs> Forget about syphilis, you'll get better. <laughs> <laughs> right, there you go. And that's the truth, and that's how it all started. And the important thing was, and this will just take a minute, but of course the glasses have to come out. But I need a better prescription. So okay. Here we go. This led us to a series, a series of primetime specials, displaced homemaker, caring for the frail, frail elderly that gave us two Emmys, sexual harassment on the job. Do you know nobody even knew what it meant? We did it. Channel 17, we did it as a total station project. We had promotions, we had public service announcements, we had a resource guide. I'm going to show you something. This is, see, it's a complete guide, it's got plenty in it. This happens to be how to get on TV, a guide for nonprofits, for programming, for PSAs. And every project we had had a guide. 
so you knew where to go for resources in the community. And the terrible thing is I never saved them. Can you believe it? This is the only one I say how to get on TV and guide for nonprofits. I must tell you, they didn't give much of a darn at the station. Everything was okay. Oh, they threw in baseball for the better half. Why? Making a buck. I didn't know baseball. I knew nothing about baseball. Of course, that was about the personalities, actually. But the fact of the matter is, I was so in love with the process of doing this, of creating, of following through, and then I had a wonderful assistant, Judy Roblansky. She's not here today, and she was invaluable. But in any case, the station let me alone. Oh yeah, I did a stupid thing. And if there were kids in the audience, I'd say, remember, put it in the back of your head. Never take it for granted that you're not worth something. Doing all the projects and everything, I said I wasn't going to do this when I started. Nobody ever thought, I was too stupid to ask for more money. I didn't need the money, as a matter of fact. That wasn't the point. The point is, you should get paid when you're doing extra stuff that's bringing in revenue. We sold it to Cadillac Dog Food. Yeah, we did. And, uh, but I had the best time of my life. Well, I think that, that's about it, except to say that this was, it has been a tremendous love affair. There is not a moment, I think, in 30 years of that station, and one year later, I was a, they asked me to be a consultant in the affairs. There wasn't a single moment that I didn't walk in the hall, in my office, doing a program where I wasn't grateful, grateful for the excitement, the pleasure, the privilege of being an influence in some fashion to somebody who needed some help, some advice, and the glorious job of being a public affairs director. Thank you so much.